St. John's Lutheran Church, Culbertson, Nebraska. How are we doing this morning? Good morning. Foreman Gorgia, welcome. I'll get up this morning and celebrate the 25th Sunday after Pentecost. In our prayers, in our worship service this morning, we shall offer up prayers on behalf of Wayne Needham, Zurich Penfield, John Prex, Byron Alberts, and Reese Tinas. Also celebrate, we'll also have a prayer on behalf of those celebrating a birthday this week. Warren Shopard, Darren Jureski, Dave Flagner. Our service this morning is wide service setting three without Holy Communion. And the intro is Psalm 146. I now invite you to open up your hymnals to the opening hymn. Let us begin by singing hymn 797, Praise the Almighty.
this morning is the mind service setting three without Holy Communion, starting on page 184 in the front of the hymnal. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Beloved in the Lord, let us draw near with a true heart and confess our sins unto God our Father, beseeching Him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to grant us forgiveness. Our help is in the name of the Lord. Amen. I said, I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord.
people of the end of all things and your just judgment. We do be stirred up to holiness of living here and dwell with you forever hereafter. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. You may be seated for the reading bless the day. Yeah. 
our living Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. The text for today's notation comes to us from the Gospel lesson. And he called his disciples to him and said to them, Truly I say to you, this poor widow has put in more than all those who are contributing to the offering box. For they all contributed of their abundance. But she, out of her poverty, has put everything she had, all she had to live on. This is the gospel of the Lord. So these words spoken by our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and penned by St. Mark, the blessed evangelist, on the inspirational spirit. The mind of being for this temptation is trusting in the Lord. Oh, it is good to trust in the Lord. Trust in our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. So I give living a perfect life dying upon the cross, to be raised again on the third day. He has done all things necessary for you and me to have complete and total forgiveness of sins. Life and completely and total salvation. How good it is to trust in our God that he will lead and guide you and me to where he wants us to be so his will can be done through us. How good it is to trust in the Lord, that he is steadfast and faithful and always keeps all of his words and all of his promises. And he always does. How good it is to trust in the Lord and know that he has chosen and called you and me to be one of his children by faith. With him as our loving Heavenly Father. With him as our loving Heavenly Father now. That he will always provide for all of our needs, a body and spirit and soul, today, tomorrow, and even for all of eternity. Oh, it is good. It is very good to trust in the Lord. This brings us to the Old Testament lesson for today. The Old Testament lesson for today, we find the prophet Elijah. And he was in Israel. And now a three-year drought was ascending upon the land. And the Lord God came to the prophet Elijah, and he spoke to him. And the prophet Elijah, he heard the word of the Lord. And the Lord told the prophet Elijah, I want you to leave Israel here, and I want you to go to Zarephath, to Gentile land. Because now it's time to add the Gentiles, the family of God, to the kingdom of God, to the elect, God's holy people. And I want you to know that I've already commanded that there will be a widow there who will provide for you food and drink. So stay there three years with her, and she will provide for you. They never argued with God's word. Faith never doubts God's word. Faith always trusts God's word. Faith always follows God's word. So by faith, the prophet Elijah took the road trip down to Zarephath. He got to Zarephath to the city gates. And lo and behold, it was exactly the way the Lord said it would be. And there was the widow just standing there. And so the prophet Elijah said to the widow, oh, by the way, if you please give me a glass of water to drink, because I am thirsty. I am as dry as the sands of the Sahara. And the widow said, yeah, I can do that for you. No problem. And off she went to get the water. And the property line of call to her and said, I want you also to make me a morsel of bread to eat. And the widow of Zarephath turned to the prophet Elijah and said, Hey, you know, this is the deal, and this is the way it is. I've got only a few handfuls of flour and a few drops of oil left. I'm now gathering six to build the flour so that I can make more morsel bread for myself and my son to eat. And we're going to eat it, and then we are going to lay down and die of starvation. That's the way it is. The prophet Elijah looked at her and said, Do not fear. Do not be afraid. For the Lord God, my God of Israel, Yahweh, the maker of all the heavens and the earth, has promised that the jar of flour will always be filled and the jar of oil will never be empty. 
she do? Well, she put her faith and trust in the words and prompts of God and make the morsel of bread first for the prophet Elijah to eat? Or will she cast it aside and instead make the morsel of bread for her and her son to eat? What would she do? Between the rock and the hard place. As it was, the Holy Spirit and faith prevailed. And as it was, the widow of Zarephath, by faith she then followed the word of God and made the morsel of bread first for the prophet Elijah and then for herself and her son. And lo and behold, we have the awesome God, the God who always keeps all of his words and all of his promises no matter what. And lo and behold, the jar of flour was always filled and the jar of oil was never emptied for three years until the drought ended and it rained again. Because you and I have the awesome God. You and I have the steadfast and faithful God. He always keeps all of his words and all of his promises no matter what. Because it's all on him. It's always good to follow the word of God. Good things happen when we follow the word of God. Our God has always promised us that he will bless us if we follow his word. He's never promised to bless us when we don't. Brings us to the gospel lesson this morning. In the gospel this morning, we find our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ now in the holy city of Jerusalem. And now he was at the temple. And now it was the Lord's day. And he was at the Lord's house. Now he was watching people put money into the offering baskets. And the rich and powerful went by, and they poured in dobs and dobs of money into the offering baskets, and that was good. It's always good to thank the Lord for the blessings that he's bestowed upon his people. And then there was this widow. She was poor. Poor than church moms. Poor than poor. Text tells us she had two copper coins that equaled one single penny. And she dropped the two copper coins into the offering basket. And Jesus saw it. He called the disciples to him and said, Hey, did you guys see that? Do you see what that widow did? She put in the final two coins she had, one final penny. And by doing that, she put more into the offering basket than all the rich and the powerful. Because the rich and the powerful, they gave according to the overabundance of blessings that God had given to them. But she, she gave out of poverty, all in all. like the widow of Zarephath. You and I are just like the widow. 
widow in the gospel lesson for today in two important ways. The first is this. We also have faith in Jesus as the promised Messiah. He would die or else his children, one of his holy people. The second is this. Like the prophet Elijah, the widow of Zarephath, and the widow in the gospel lesson for today, we are all sons of Adam and daughters of Eve. We all have a sinful flesh. We all have original sin. And so we are sinners and saints at the same time. Also at the same time, we have doubts and fears that exist alongside faith and trust. When doubts and fears increase, faith and trust decreases. When doubts and fears rule, it's really, really hard to put our faith and trust in our God and His words and His promises. Me and every one of you have a sinful flesh. Me and every one of you have a original sin. Me and every one of you, we fall short. <coughs> so we look to our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ who does not fall short. And now we look to the son of another widow. Her name was Mary. Married to Joseph, Joseph of Nazareth, the very parents of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the very parents of the promised Messiah. The promised Messiah, Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, came down from above and from the outside to all the work that's necessary and required so you and I can have complete and total forgiveness of sins, so you and I can live life and live life abundantly, so you and I can have complete and total salvation. <coughs> And so as we look at Jesus being the promised Messiah, the one conceived by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary, we find that for all the times you and I have been filled with doubts and fears, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ trusted in the words and promise of God and sort of his plan of eternal salvation. That by him and him alone living a perfect life, and dying upon a cross and being raised again on the third day, he could conquer all of sin with all of his righteousness, all of Satan with all of his love, all of death with resurrection and new life. And it is so, because God said so in his word. It is good to follow the words and promises of God. The last thing Jesus said before he died, as he hung upon the cross, was, Father, into your hands. I command my spirit. Trusting that as he died upon the cross on Good Friday, the Holy Spirit, the Holy Father, keep his words of promise and come to him on Easter Sunday as he lay dead in the tomb of Joseph of Arimathea and breathed into him the very breath of life like he breathed into Adam, the first man. And Jesus would be resurrected from the dead. And it is so. Because our God said so. And our God is the great and awesome God. He always keeps all of his words. He always keeps all of his promises. And now it comes back to you and to me. No one can just simply put their trust in God, his words and promises. They must have a gift of saving faith. For you and me, if you have to get killed, for you and me to begin the baptism of one. And then you, when you and I were baptized, we connected to our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the Good Shepherd. And now his words and promises connected to the sacrament of baptism were fulfilled. We connected to him, and he connected to us, and the divine exchanges took place. He took upon himself the bad to give to us his good. He took upon himself the bad and wrong belief. He gave to you and me the gift of saving faith. And him as Lord and Savior and promised Messiah. He took upon himself all of our sins. All the sins that you and I would commit in the course of our lifetime. And all the sins committed against us. And he gave to us the gift of forgiveness of sins. That's why he died upon the cross on Good Friday. Take all of my sins and all of your sins and all the sins put against you on his shoulders, 
not exist. The day Jesus comes to you, he says, your sins are no more. You are forgiven. Be part in peace. He's the one who took upon himself for our old Adam and sinful flesh. He gave to you and me a new man. Now I have a desire to want to put our faith and trust in his word and his promise. He, gave, he took upon himself for our eternal condemnation and gave to you and me the promise of eternal salvation. So you and I know where we're going when we die. When your time comes, when my time comes to be called home, we know we are going to that place called paradise, where there is just peace, joy, and happiness for all of eternity. Because our God said so. It's his word and promise to me and every one of you. And you and I have the awesome God. He always keeps all of his words. He always keeps all of his promises. No matter what. Because of our sinful flesh and the old evil fall that creates doubts and fears in our hearts, moment after moment, day after day, you and I have to continue to come to the Lord's house on the Lord's day. Just like the widow in the gospel lesson did for today. So we can be like the widow of Zarephath. So you and I can stand in the presence of God and hear his awesome words and promises from the one who is like the prophet Elijah, the one who is called the son. And as you do that, you hear the old familiar voice and old familiar words. As you hear his words and promises, something more marvelous takes place. The law, the old man is put to death. The gospel, the new man is brought forward. So you and I can put our faith and trust in our God's words and promises. Words and promises such as these. I promise you, I will never forsake you. I will never forget you. I will never abandon you. I promise you, I will remain by your side even until the end of the age. To listen when no one else will listen. To understand you when no one else gets you. To help you when there's no one else there to help you. I promise you, as you and I live, as we live in these final days here with all this uncertainty and all this insecurity, he says, I promise you, I will always be the solid rock upon which you stand. Is any of God is something more than sinking? It comes to you and me when we are up to our ears and bad. And everything is going bad. And everything is going from bad to worse. He says, I promise you, I will take all of your bad and change it. All that is good. He promises he'll always be our refuge. He promises he'll always be our fortress. He promises he'll always be our present help in all times of trouble. Reminding you and me that all power and authority in the heavens and earth there's no problem we can handle it. Our only concern is small. Because he is your loving Heavenly Father. And you are one of his dear children. The lessons for today are all about our God providing for his people. All our needs in the physical realm and all our needs in the spiritual realm. Today Jesus also comes to us and says, Consider the birds of the air and grass of the field. Share the birds of the air. The birds of the air, they don't plant anything over here. They don't harvest anything over here. They don't store up anything in barns over here. If the Heavenly Father would have loved for the birds of the air, see so that even the birds of the air have food to eat, water to drink, and trees in which to build their nests. Consider the grass of the field. The grass of the field is even less than the birds of the air. At least the birds of the air, when they get up in the morning, they sing and praise God for calling them into being taking care of them and watching over them. Consider the grass field which is here today and gone tomorrow. Out of love our Heavenly Father created the grass of the field. Out of love he sees to it that even the grass of the field receives sunshine and rain. And it's clothed even more beautifully than all the beautiful robes of King Solomon with the lilies of the field. And are you not more than the birds of the air? And are you not more than the grass of the field? Yes, you are. You are children of our loving Heavenly Father. Our Heavenly Father, who is the God of Israel, Yahweh, the creator of all the heavens and all the earth. Our loving Heavenly Father, who always keeps all of his words and all 
usually given unto them, strength, friends, relatives, pleasures, and above all, your gospel promise of peace and forgiveness. Dear Lord, as these, your servants, mark the passing of one year and the beginning of a new year, for all your precious mercy upon them through your word and sacrament. Lord, in your mercy, yeah. hear our prayer. What a blight that reached Tina's, Wayne Needham, Kurt Heron, Sir Gensfield, John Frex, Byron Alberts. I grace receive healing and strength from you. They with us might be thankful in sickness and health. They might grant them uh, you might grant them strength to accept your will for their temporal and eternal lives, visit them in their afflictions, and empower them through your words and promises. Lord, in your mercy. All powerful creator, we praise you for blessing the earth and make it fruitful, bring forth in abundance, whatever is needed for the support of our lives. Promise we employ you to work around your farmers. Grant us the growing weather of sunshine and rain. We both have a seed time and a gathering of fruits of the earth, thus proclaiming your goodness with thanksgiving. Lord, in your mercy. In your hands, O oh Lord, we could all when we pray, trusting in your mercy through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. Amen. Lord, as your kingdom, you just pray, our Father. Who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And look at us not into temptation, to deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. You may be seated. Let us continue by singing the Thanksgiving hymn, hymn 712, CP first.
Pause the camera.